Hey everybody, if you are either a PHP programmer or a database programmer, or you're learning to be either of those two, for example, if you're in my CSIS 1550 class, or you're in my CSIS 2440 class, in either of those scenarios, you're going to need to know how to set up a development environment on your local machine, setting up a local server. So we're going to walk through how that all works here. Now the first thing to understand here, a lot of times when people think about a server, they envision sort of a tower like this, and they see, you know, those big server farms with hundreds of machines, and they have all this server software running on it and everything. And the truth is, the server itself can be any computer. It's just software that you put on the machine that makes it a server. And so we're going to use this software that's called Champ, X-A-M-P-P. -P. We're going to talk about what that means in just a minute. But this software can be installed on any machine. You can make any machine a server. So in fact, we're not going to put it on some big fancy tower. We're going to put it on our local laptops. So here's the way the, the basic idea works. When setting up a server environment, there are mainly four things that you need to think about. Thing number one is the operating system. Thing number two is the web server or the web service, which allows you to serve up web pages. Then there's the database management system. And then there's the server side scripting language. So these four things make up a local development environment or a remote development environment. But they make up the, the crux of a server that's meant for delivering web pages and connecting to a database and so forth. And so this Champ server software is exactly that. So let's take a look at the different options for an operating system, the different options for web server, the different options for database, and for server side scripting language. First up, the operating systems. As we know, these are the big three here, right? The Mac OS and Microsoft Windows and Linux. Those are the big three. And there are other operating systems out there. There's Spark Station, which is a rare one, but the, from Microsoft Sun Microsystems, and there's a few other ones out there, but these are the main three that we care about. And it just so happens the Champ setup will actually work with any of these three. And in fact, that's what the X stands for. It stands for cross-platform. So these three operating systems will work just fine with Champ. That's where the X comes from. Next up, we have the web services, right? And there's really only two main web services out there. There's Microsoft's IIS, which stands for Internet Information Services, and then there's Apache, the HTTP server. Both of these, if installed on a computer, will allow you to serve up web pages. So if you've ever been to a website in your life, which obviously you have, then you actually, believe it or not, were interacting with either Apache or Microsoft's IIS, depending on whether you're hitting a Linux machine or a Windows machine or how it's all set up. The one that we care about, though, for our Champ setup is Apache, and that is actually where the A comes from. Next up, there are the database services. And there are tons of database services, right? The couple big enterprise ones, number one is Oracle, and the second number, the number two big one is Microsoft SQL Server. Both of those are in high demand, and they're mainly for major enterprise systems. But there are plenty of other ones. In fact, Oracle owns MySQL, which is a free open source database system. And then there's another one called MariaDB, which is actually a spin-off. It's sort of a fork or a branch of MySQL. And then SQL Server, of course, Microsoft, they also happen to own Microsoft Access, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And then there's this rogue one out there called Postgres, which is actually becoming more and more popular again. It was, it kind of was a little bit popular, then it waned in popularity, then now it's coming back. And so MySQL, MariaDB, and Postgres are the three major free open source ones. The one, however, we use in this particular setup with Champ is the MariaDB, and that is where the M comes from. Next up, we have the server-side scripting languages, and there are tons of those. This is just a small sample of them. There's Perl, Python, I'm sure you've heard of Python at this point in your life, definitely Java, and then Node.js, which is actually a JavaScript-based server-side scripting. Typically, JavaScript is front-end in the web browser, 
but they now have a server side based situation and a software and it's called Node.js. There's Ruby, you may have heard of Ruby on Rails, and then of course there's PHP. So the two that we're interested in with our Champ setup, however, is Perl and PHP. And that's what the two P's stand for in Champ. So we just looked at the components that are gonna be for our particular server, but I wanna make sure you understand the way these can be set up. There's lots of different configurations. So for example, probably the most common one is the LAMP server. Linux for the operating system, Apache for the web server, MySQL for the database, and then PHP for the scripting. And this is a Linux box and pretty much every website you've ever gone to ever with, there's exceptions, but for the most part, it was on a LAMP platform. Then there's also a, a Mac version of this where it's the same thing, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, but it's a Mac OS system. Now this is not something that you would ever host a real website live on the internet on. This is a development environment that you can install on a Mac. And it's a pretty popular one for people who are Mac programmers. They can use this uh, MAMP setup. There's also a version of it for Windows, and it's called WAMP. And in fact, I used to use WAMP as a programmer on my local machine. I'd use it for database programming, and I'd use it for PHP locally just for testing. And then when I was done and everything's live, I'd, I'd put it on my real server out in the real world, which was on a LAMP server. So there's the, the Mac, MAMP, the WAMP for Windows. Now with Windows, there's other setups as well. And typically these other setups would be the ones that you would see on a live server out in the real world on the internet, not a development server. And that is the Wizen server, it's Windows, IIS for the web server, then SQL Server, which is Microsoft's version of the database, and then .NET. So we call that a Wizen. There's also a Windows version called WISC, W-I-S-C, and that the C in that case just stands for C Sharp. So all these different variations here, there's WAMP, LAMP, and keep in mind too that LAMP is the Linux uh, Apache MySQL PHP. This is typically what you'll see on a real server, a live server on the internet when you go to a real website. And typically you'll see these two if you happen to be hitting a Windows machine, an ASP.NET machine, or any machine that's running the Windows operating system uh, as a server, Windows server. So those, those three there are live servers. The other three here, MAMP is typically a development environment that's local on your local Mac for, for writing code. And then WAMP, it's the same idea. It's local for writing your code. And the idea here is that ultimately, if you're using either the MAMP or WAMP, you're doing that on your local machine to develop, and when you're all done, you're gonna upload it to a real live LAMP server on the internet. Well, rather than having you install MAMP if you're a Mac user and WAMP if you're a Windows user, we're not gonna mess with any of that. What we're gonna do is we're going to use Champ, which again, it's there's the PHP that's the same here. There's the MySQL, which is the same here and here. And here, this is actually MariaDB. And then this is Apache, which is the same in here. And then last, we have, rather than Mac or Windows, we have cross-platform. It works on those two as well as a Linux box. So it works on all three, Windows, LAMP, or Linux, and Mac. Right, so we're going to be doing a Champ setup. The extra P there is for Perl, which we will not be using at all i don't use it i don't write in it i don't i don't program it at all but i use we obviously use php so we're going to be using champ and why are we going to be using champ because as i pointed out it works for all operating systems it works with apache which is the most common web service out there it works with MariaDB, which is based on mysql which is again the most popular out there then we have php 7 and we have Perl, which we're not going to worry about for this setup. We're going to install it just because it comes along for the ride, but we're not going to use it. So let's take a quick look at the basic overview of the idea of how to install Champ and how I have the video set up for you to do that. So first up, both the database and the PHP students, or anybody that's just going to be doing database programming 
or a PHP code, you will need to download and install Champ. And there's a whole separate video on how to do that. We're going to look at that and you'll be able to look at that in just a minute. But then after you download and install Champ, on that same video, it's going to show you step two, which applies to both the database and the PHP students, which is modify the database settings. Both of those steps are part of one video. Then from there, things change whether you're a database student or a PHP student. For the case of the database student, CSIS 1550, after you've done the first two steps, you'll do this third step, which is install the sample databases. There are three databases we use in this class that are pre-built that we use for a lot of our exercises and the, the lecture videos and so forth. For the PHP students, for CSIS 2440, you will not be installing those sample databases. They, you will not need them but you will need to set up your PHP page. So both sets of students will do download and install Champ, modify database settings. Then if you're a PHP student, you'll set up your PHP page. If you're a database student, you're gonna install the databases. And don't worry, I'll show you how to do all of this. I just wanna give you sort of the big overview of what's happening here. So again, installing Champ and the database settings, that's one, there's two steps, but it's one video. Both sets of students, 1550 and 2440, need to watch that. Then when you're done watching that, database students, you go over to this video here. That's the video number two for the database students. Or if you're a PHP student, you go to that video, which is your video number two. Either way you slice it, you're going to be only watching two videos. There's one video here, and either that's number two or that's number two. Also, it's different for Macs versus PC. So I've made a set of those videos for both the Mac users and PC users. So make sure you watch the one for your appropriate system. And Linux users, you're on your own, sorry. The reason for that is there are lots of different flavors of Linux and typically Linux users, they're a little bit more sophisticated users for the most part. And you guys probably already know your way around this stuff and it shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to install it. So if you're using a Linux machine, this will work. I just don't have a video for you to follow. I just have one for Mac and for PCs. All right, folks, that's it. Next step will be watching the champ slash DB settings video. So I'll see you there.